Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to sunny Florida. We are here at Siesta Key Beach with Jeremiah Jennings from Growing Green Landscapes over there in Alabama. What's up, Jeremiah? What's up, Paul? I'm doing very well. I'm excited to be here, excited to create content, excited to be a part in other people's content, excited to learn and grow my business while I'm here. Yeah, well, I really appreciate you passing up the opportunity to go down to that hot tub. <laughs> Blake oh, Albertson's yeah. down there. It's 104 degrees. It feels really good. But I asked you if you'd hop on a podcast. and uh, I'm excited. That's what we're here for, man. Let's build this community. Yeah, so it's really cool. We were talking earlier with Caleb, who's been in the industry for 20 years. I got a decade in, and you're, you're kind of new. Mm -hmm. But the beautiful thing of all these podcasts and things like that, basically Caleb and Mai's ceiling can be your floor. You, yeah. you can start where we took mistake after mistake to get to, and then you basically hopefully will avoid the mistakes we made and really flourish in your business and life a lot faster. So we're going to hear Jeremiah's story uh, coming right up. I want to say thank you to all the folks that made this possible, Jeremiah, and uh, big shout outs to Launchpreneur Academy and Hardscape Academy for sponsoring this beautiful home that we're at for the week. Absolutely. Could not be done. We couldn't be here without them. Yeah. So thank you to Brian and thank you to Caleb, um, the Hardscape Academy, Launchpreneur Academy for sponsoring this house, giving us the time, the space to be able to create content like this. It's a really cool opportunity. Also, thanks to the kickoff tour sponsors. I'm out here on a kickoff tour, uh, bringing you guys content in person with folks. So thanks to our friends at Xmark, Kohler Engines, and Company Cam. Their links will be in today's show notes, and we appreciate them making all of this possible. And uh, last but not least, thanks to our friends at Jobber. Good job, Jeremiah. I knew it, man. I'm, a, I'm an avid listener of your show. I don't know why you don't believe me. There you go. So, well, I, I appreciate it. I was asking Blake the other day. I was like, you, you listen to my podcast, Blake? I heard that this morning. You're like, do you even listen to uh, me ever? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and he said yes. So that, that made me feel good, man. Well, it was it was uh, intimidating when Andy Mulder was telling me that he listens to my show. I was like, man, I, I really want to bring the best of the best guests on and the best of the You're best high content. company when yeah. Andy Mulder's listening. Out there. So, But anyway, Jobber is the business management software that I've used, Jeremiah, since 2019. I uh, unfortunately heard you sharing today that you still don't have some customers cards on file. Yep. And, uh, I think that's so important because we want to be spending our time on doing the work and, uh, Absolutely. you know, not chasing money down of getting paid. And with jobber, you can actually get the customer's card on file and just charge the card on the agreed upon date. That will save an outrageous amount of time in, um, situations where you got to make calls and go look for that check in the grill the mat under the mat um wherever when you have a customer's card on file easy peasy you just charge it and move right along and every now and again their card will expire or, you know they got a new car and you got to call them and be like hey your car got declined and you know they just it was just because the expiration date change or whatever so there's a little bit of maintenance with it but way it eliminates better. a lot of hassle absolutely and so uh, Jobber can help you with that and much, much more. If you actually want to try Jobber for 14 days for free, uh, you can go to getjobber.com forward slash Paul. And uh, if you do uh, try out Jobber, uh, you'll actually save 20% off your first six months. So Can't get, beat that. Getjobber.com forward slash Paul. So what are you looking forward to, Jeremiah, with, with hanging around folks who have you know kind of um, – paved the way and have gotten some success in their business. What, what are you trying to learn this week, hanging around some of the heavy hitters in our industry? That's a loaded question, Paul. I'm, I'm here to learn a lot. We were just talking about that before we even hit record. You're like, man, I, we got a, I got an eight-hour drive back home. I got a flight back home. There's a lot of time to process what we're going through right now and what we're learning and stuff. Um, I think for me, one of my biggest things is, so on my podcast, I, I talk about all the time in every episode just about building this community one relationship at a time mm. and relationships are huge to me they're they're a crucial crucial thing in my life and i think that's one of the things that i'm going into this this week with is i want to leave here with some better relationships but i want to build some relationships with these guys and um these these just influencers and um they, they don't even like to be called influencers but it's just the fact that they're investing time into people's lives. They're investing time to create this content, investing money. Uh, I mean, I, you already said thanks once. I'll say thanks again, Hardscape Academy, Entrepreneur Academy, Brian and Liz, Caleb and Brittany, for self-funding this this house and putting this event on and allowing us to come down here. I'm a little nobody in the social media industry, but I get to come create content, build relationships, and that's what I'm here for is to build relationships and just 
I, I want to further my business knowledge through them because I know they've been doing it for years. And um, another point we might get later, get on to later in the podcast, but uh, kind of a new thing that I'm going to start saying here is I, I, I want to start building a new floor for like all the time. Oh wow! We don't need to we don't need to keep the same floor. That every you're, what you're saying is you said earlier on you said your ceiling can be our floor. Well, mm-hmm. my my ceiling could be somebody else's floor, and I've only been in it four years. Right. So what if I what if we put out content that helps somebody else's get start them a floor, mm-hmm. and then in two years after that their ceiling becomes someone else's floor, and so we just keep elevating the floor where eventually we're going to be at, at the top of this house. It's going to be so high because that's what people are starting out at by creating this content is. Floor after floor after floor keeps going up because we're, I I am investing in myself one by learning and contributing and then trying to give back a little bit I can to to help other people out there. Yeah, and what's cool about the green industry specifically is whether you're out there plowing that snow, making that dough, yep. as some of folks are actually today. It's 80 and sunny down here in Florida, yeah, but I'm, I'm on, on Instagram. It's I, I was sweating earlier looking. I'm on Instagram and I see all these you know. Plow trucks, yep. and, you know, snow banks, and yeah. But whether you're plowing snow, making dough, cutting that grass, making that cash, out driving around town, giving quotes or whatever, uh, people passively listen to podcasts all the time. And so some folks listen to music, talk radio, whatever. But uh, years ago, I started. I used to listen to sports talk, and yeah. so uh, I cut thing. that out. And probably like 2016 ish, I think 2017, I got convicted. Honestly, I was like. It doesn't really matter 100 years from now who wins that game. And I'm sitting here worried about the injury report and the spread and the you know, the guys going back and forth. And I realized I should probably be spending my, my subconscious time. You know, when you're driving, you can still be listening to a podcast. Yep. When you're at the gym or whatever, hanging out in the hot tub. <laughs> You can be listening. I was at. I was listening to Andy Mulder. I was actually sitting up there on that balcony listening to. I, I was listening to this kind of weird. I listened to the Green Street podcast, but a- Andy Mulder was my guest, and I was like, it was so good. I wanted yeah. to listen back to it again. But I say all that to say, more than any other industry, I think guys who are out in the field or out working on their business can be listening to podcasts in the background. Yeah. And so I just think it's so important that we have a a full library of oper- you know options where guys can listen and take their business to the next level. So tell us a little bit of why you started your, your podcast and what, what your goals are with the Growing Green uh, Landscape podcast. Yeah, so I know I know the Green Industry podcast is growing at a rapid rate, having record record downloads and numbers for, for y'all at, at the Green Industry podcast, and that is awesome. Great to hear if you're a new listener, if you're tuning in, whether you're watching on YouTube here or listening, listening last on the year, podcast. Last month we had 109,000 downloads. That's insane. In one month. Yeah, that's insane. I was like, that's crazy. Yeah, and that's in January. It's not even yeah. the peak. The peak Fuller time of Tim the year. Was, Fuller Tim was getting feisty with me. He's he was coming at you. He was uh, coming he, back at you. When we were going to a million, man, he screenshot me. I screenshot saw him, me. Yeah. He was getting so uh, in a good way, but we're we're competitive, and 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 I kind of maybe I was a little too cocky, but as yeah, soon as I hit it, broken that. first person I yeah. texted was Brian Fuller. So I was like, "Here you go, bro, million. He's like, "Congratulations." You and know, then like two weeks later, <laughs> yeah, gr- like, grudgingly, it's one of those. Co- uh, you know, like brotherly yeah. love, like all right. You don't really want to give it, but deep down he does. Deep down yeah. he does. But but it's cool. It's so cool to have uh, friends who push you to be better and and, Absolutely. and things like that. So it's it's all it's all in good, clean fun. We we, we help each other and and it, uh, if you're so back, if you're new to the show, this is all stuff that's normal. We're all messing with each other whenever we say giving each other a hard time or anything like that. It, we're all good friends outside of this, and um, we really help and build each each other's businesses as well but in life as well we want to help each other any way we can so um if you're new here thanks for tuning in so if you haven't heard my story uh started the business four years ago landscaping company still doing that business today really working on refining and getting very profitable uh, as far as the podcast goes that is a venture that we started man we're coming up on a year paul wow we're really not that far away i think i've been doing it eight months now i started back in june uh, I got over 60 episodes out, so we're not quite to not quite to whatever you're. What, you almost to 600 now. You're we're, getting close. We're past that. Yeah. Are you past 600? Yeah. It's, I don't know the exact number of this yeah. show, but you're we're mid, getting in the 640, 650 yeah, range. Mid sixes. So. so we're nowhere there, but we've we've got out 60 something episodes. Uh, so I, I enjoy doing it. But I think my reason was uh, I want to be a younger influence to to anybody. So I I, I say this. I want to be a help to someone who's young in business, whether you're 40 years old or you're 18 or 14 years old. If you're young in business, I want to be there to help you because I am young in business. I'm right there with you. 
Uh, I'm going through those stages right now. I've, I'm, like I said, I'm only in year four, so I'm still going through, as you already mentioned, poking a little fun at me. Don't have, don't have all my card on files yet. That's a huge thing in my business that I'm working on transitioning because it's, we talked about your ceiling is my floor. That's, this is what I want to create for somebody who's listening to my show is, look, I started off four years ago without having card on file. So I want anybody who's listening, if you haven't started out or you're at the beginning, start out now, card on file. Don't ever even start without, before even doing that. And all the other companies do it, um, <clears throat> Verizon Wireless yeah, or whatever else. you pay, yeah. your, your cable bill. You get charged your, your insurance, as as, yeah. uh, whoever your insurance is, all of them. It's just their policy, and it's so natural. Yet we in the landscape business, if if you add up over ten years, how much time you waste if you're going collecting checks and yeah. collecting payment and going to the mail and you know turning the key, Lord Jesus, let it be today. Yeah, you know <laughs> when you're getting a big check, you know for a deposit or whatever. That's just no way to live a life, especially when you have a family on the end to support. Where you got kids, food to put on the table for your kids and all that. That's just not a way to live a life. So for me, it is creating content and, and producing and building relationships with guys who are young in business. I'm, in, I'm still in that stage. Questions people ask me that I can still relate to, I'm not far removed from them. Yeah. Uh, I'm still – I'm either dealing with it now or I dealt with it a year or two ago. So – um, any way that I can help anyone there, that that's what I'm here for. And just entrepreneurship in general. Entrepreneurship is a scary thing to get into. Uh, it's something that I've been fortunate to be doing ever since I was in high school. I never really got into the corporate world at all. I have never worked a W-2 job. Never filed. Wow. Never ever done that. Never worked for anyone uh, except myself. So that is a that's a blessing in in my eyes. Is I'm I'm proud of that. That's something that I'll I'll hold with me for a long time because. Um, I think it's taught me a lot. I think it's helped me grow, and it's helped me come and become a better person at the age of 22 years old. I'm running a company, and, and I still have so much to figure out. Nowhere nowhere near where I need to be. But it has helped me learn early on some key principles and building relationships with yourself, with Caleb, Brian, Blake. Um, I, I'm striving to learn so much more every day. And if I, can, if I can give one piece of advice back to anybody out there that I just want to give one little piece back in any way I can. So that, that, that is our goal in the podcast. Cool. Well, coming up, I actually want you to share a little bit more behind the hood of your business and, yeah. and give us a little bit of the day-to-day -day operations and what you guys are doing over there in Trustville, Alabama. That's where you That's are, right? That's right. You got it. Yeah. Cause I've been to Jason Creel's house before and I remember him saying, Five minutes away. Or from no, me. I remember you saying I'm five minutes away, so I'm DMing you all day. Hey man, let's collab. I was actually let's working. collab. Yeah. Let's collab. And you're like, I'm going to the beach this week, and I gotta, I gotta I hustle out, and get it done. Yeah, so. I was out mowing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I remember. So uh, we're gonna kick it over to Mr. Producer real quick. Maybe you can help me, Jeremiah. I want to move this couch. I want to sit in a chair. This is that's awkward. That is on awkward. Couch. Yeah. So maybe. Don't laugh, but I tried to move it on my own. <laughs> <laughs> See, Paul says he goes to the gym in the morning. He really goes and eats the Twinkie. He doesn't actually oh, go to the gym. Oh, man. But you'll see. This this is uh, high quality. See? It, 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 it's, it's sturdy. Yeah, for outdoor furniture. So, but, but maybe we – when Mr. Producer plays today's show sponsors, we'll, uh, we can move that chair over here. You Come might, back with you a new setup. Me. Yeah. Oh, and we are on YouTube, guys. So that's right. Uh, my YouTube channel. You can see this whole transaction happen. Yeah. You, green in you, Yeah. Green Industry Podcast with Paul Jamison. It's on the YouTube. Uh, Mike Pletz, Many of you guys have been pushing me for a while. Man, why don't you get your podcast on YouTube? Like Joe Rogan. You know, he just puts the yeah. interview up there, and then the Joe Rogan clips and stuff like that. And so, I um, I was like, yeah, I'll try that. You know. And uh, so it's it, we're, we're slowly rolling it out. It's it's a lot just to do the audio, but then you throw the video in there. It's a whole different ball game. Yeah. So I'm trying, and uh, make sure you guys head on over there at YouTube and follow it because I have like 900 and something subscribers. I want to hit the thousand mark. Yeah, you're almost soon, there. and then and then hopefully be like in Brian's world here. And, yeah, and, and big, big YouTuber. Big YouTubers. Yeah. YouTube so, millions, baby. Yeah. Because there ain't no podcast millions. <laughs> <laughs> you're finding out quickly. You're finding out quickly. Yes, very but quickly. But it is cool to help other people, and I'm just passionate. I, I enjoy podcasting. Yeah. And so people are like, well, how do you get paid or whatever podcasting? Because on YouTube, like if you get a lot of views, you get AdSense. You can't get that with podcasts. No, there ain't no – there is not, not no. even such thing. So nope. – um, but – Anyway, we digress, and we're actually. Why don't we talk about this on your podcast? You said you wanted. Yeah, to Yeah, we're going to talk about that. So if, yeah. if you keep listening to this episode, we'll be right back. All right, there you go, well, yeah, man, Mr. Producer. This guy's segues <laughs> are pretty good. We'll be right back. Hey, guys. Welcome. Don't you want 
check out your shower. Yeah. You guys got the Y'all got the best shower in the house. Yeah, the shower's to the right. Let's just say y'all will have a good time. I hope the mics aren't hot. <laughs> oh, man. Don't let that one get on YouTube. All right, we're back. Mr. Producer's got to edit out Jeremiah's jokes <laughs> for uh, the. Uh, Let's sake. get rolling. All right. <laughs> Guys, we are back here in beautiful Siesta Key. Jason and Tracy Creole just arrived. They got the best, they got the best room in the house. For many different reasons. It's yeah. It's a great, great room. The Yeah, <laughs> it, it really is. And uh, when I, because I was the first one to get here, Jeremiah, and so I asked the guy, I said, what's the third best room in the house? Yeah. Because obviously Brian and Liz and Kayla and Brittany need the top two. Yeah. And so because I was the first dibs, you know, first one here, I was like, the property manager guy was here, Andrew, I think's his name, and uh, he was like, man, you know, what do y'all do? It's a really nice house or whatever. It's like, oh, my friend Brian's lawn maintenance, you know? Yeah. And he rented the house, and Caleb, uh, Brittany Allman or whatever. And so he's like, this is the third best room in the house. So I was like, all right, I'll take that one. I put my suitcases in there. And then uh, Jason and Tracy have the best one. Yeah. But so, but I told Brian, I was like, well, you want this one? And he's like, well, because the baby, they they prefer, like, being the furthest Secluded, away from everyone. Yeah. So they're like, we'll just take this little one in the back corner of the house or whatever. It's like, are you sure? I, I even told Liz, I was like, why don't you come look at this one first? But because they have a little six-month-old or whatever, yeah. they're just like, they, they don't prefer the... Well, they need their privacy. Emmy needs to sleep, so... Yeah, so it's probably the... They chose the quietest room. Yeah. Which somehow Jason rolls into town and gets the master on the island. Probably like the top bedroom on the island. It's pretty sweet. Just remodeled his house. Now he's coming out here and have a brand new bedroom. It's That's, pretty pretty good setup. Yeah, the the... Blessing of the Lord is on his life, I think. Absolutely. Absolutely. Jason's a great, great dude. So yep. I'm excited to see where this podcast goes here. All what right. What you got for me? Well, as I teased before uh, the break, I want you to share just a little bit about what your business uh, yeah. does for someone who might not know and, and, and uh, give a little bit of an overview of, of the services you offer and who's on your team. Yeah. So outside of the podcast are <laughs> the business that actually makes me money. Um, it is a, we're a lawn maintenance company out of Trustville, Alabama, um, five minutes away from Jason Creel, who just walked in the door. We're making a little joke about him there. Good to see him. Glad they got here safely. But, um, we're in Trustville, Alabama. We service about anywhere from 70 to 85 clients in a year. Just depends on, depends on the year. Uh, this year we're looking to grow a little bit. We might add another crew on here or something, but, uh, I started it four years ago, bought it from a buddy who I worked with in high school through, I did, the, it was my, this business, bought it from him, created it my own, made a new name, made Growing Green Landscapes, all that fun stuff. Uh, it was a business that I really enjoyed and I was like, I didn't know what I wanted to do, went to college for half of some, or uh, I went to get, I went to college for a full year um, and decided it wasn't for me. So I went full time in this and I've just ran with it ever since. It's a, it's a blessing being able to do it. It's a lot of hard work. A lot of time goes into it. Uh, there are some stressful points for sure, especially being young, being married here, and um, buying, trying to buy a house. And it's just a, uh, it's it's not always the easiest life to be an entrepreneur, but it pays off in the long run. Yeah, and I think one thing, Jeremiah, that I'm taking away from being here in this is from Andy Mulder, this is uh, from Brian and Liz, Caleb and Brittany, uh, Jason and Tracy, and, and and Blake and Natalie, and many others, is how do you defeat the odds and have a healthy marriage while owning a business while yeah. being an entrepreneur now yeah. i'm single so i'm kind of doing the framework foundational work on the front end this is awesome for you though getting to get to see real life how these couples operate yeah and i'm i'm, I'm asking not like bluntly and directly but I'm, I'm i'm kind of asking them well how do you stay married and, yeah. and stay it's not just staying married but it's like actually having a healthy, a healthy marriage yeah, a yeah. healthy marriage and I'm not saying anyone I just named is perfect, and they, they wouldn't claim to be that either. Mm -mm. But there's a special rhythm when you are an entrepreneur, when you are uh, running a business, and the responsibility that we have um, that, you know, making sure that it takes a lot of being proactive and diligent from what we learned at Together, uh, yeah, Together in the Trades. Together in the Trades, yeah. So what have you kind of, as a newlywed, 22-year-old, you know, you and Savannah have been married for what, two, three years? Uh, No, we're about to hit two years. Two years, so, okay. Yeah. So, you, we're you know, pretty... we're both in the preliminary stages of this. How do we yeah. safeguard our future so that we can 
have a, a long-lasting, successful marriage. It's funny you bring this up. We were literally just having a conversation about this at lunch. Um, we were having, we were talking about being healthy marriages and together in the together in the trades and what all is going to be going on there this year in 2022. It's going to be an awesome event. But um, I think one thing that I know we that I, we've implemented in our marriage is uh, just constant line of open line of communication. Mm-hmm. has to be key. Uh, you have to communicate everything, every purchase, not not literally down to like a roll of paper towels, but big purchases that are going to be happening that's going to affect your income significantly. It's going to affect your bank accounts. Your wife needs to know about that. Uh, my or, my or your friend husband. told me his, his threshold is $30. So yeah. anything, or, now I'm not saying that's, you know. That's not the scale for everyone. The gospel, but, but $30 yeah. or more, if it's 33 bucks, he texts his wife and says, hey, babe, I'm about to buy this. Is that okay? Yeah. So, I, I, and it I all just, depends on the size of your business we're running because I mean, there's no way Caleb and Brittany can. Oh do that. yeah, no, I'm not saying in the business. I'm saying personal. Oh, side. personal life. Oh yeah, yeah. personal life is totally my story. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but e- I'm saying even in your business though, oh, you need to have. So if you're gonna go out and buy a if new I'm mower, I'm gonna go out and buy spend you're ten say, grand. Hey, Savannah, I'm buying a new mower. Exactly. And she's like, oh heck no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. But we were talking seriously. Somebody, somebody was saying something about someone who went out and bought a like a truck or a mower or something mm-hmm. and spent. A significant amount of money on something and didn't even didn't even discuss it with their wife, and I was wow. like, "How does that even? How, you're never gonna have a healthy marriage that way. That's never yeah. gonna happen." So uh, that constant line of communication, getting your finances right, that's a huge thing. Being on the same page about finances and um, how how do you and Savannah navigate the personal side of things? Like, because she has a career. Yeah, you, you have your business. Yeah, how, how do you pay the mortgage and all your bills and and you know, she goes out and gets a Manny Petty haircut, shopping yeah. spree. How, how do, I'm not saying she does all that. <laughs> um, no, so that that's a good question. Um, this is actually, so it, I think it goes back to it depends on where you're at in your business, what stage of life and business you're in. For me, I'm coming out of that first two, three years there where I'm reinvesting heavily in the business. I'm still reinvesting, but uh, this year, 2021, this past year was the first year that I was able to pay myself a salary out of the business for a full 12 months and the business stay positive. And I didn't, I still had profit at the end of the year. Jeremiah. Yeah, that's a big thing. And it's, it's a small win. So you just paid yourself the same amount, like paid every two weeks or the same pay? amount every two weeks, uh, just like a normal W2 job would. Okay. And so I was uh, set up there and I took, I'm an LLC. So I took owner's draws. It all depends on how you're set on what kind of, um, on how you're set up there. It, mm-hmm. It's, you could be a LLC, an S corp, all that stuff. We're not going to get into all that because that's different advice that we don't need to be given. But um, I personally took owner's draws, so I paid myself every two weeks. Stuck that in our personal account. Personal and business accounts are obviously always going to be separate. Need to be separate from day one. Mm-hmm. Um, that needs to go. That goes back to the communication and talking about finances at the beginning, though. Especially in those early years of business, uh, we had to take some personal money and put it towards the business, and it was hard to keep those things separate. Do it the best you can. There's going to be some overlap, but um, just always be in constant communication with your accountant as well, making sure he knows or she knows where the money's going and what it is for, what's what it's being used for. Keep track of that. Um, but Savannah, yes, she does have another. She has her uh, career as a nurse, so she. What kind of nurse does she do? She's a pediatric nurse at a hosp- the Children's Hospital in Birmingham. Um, so one that's of the, like with little kids. Yes, little kids. Um, she's a. She's on the special care unit is actually what she's what floor she's on. She actually just stepped in a new position, so she's going to be moving to a clinic, a day clinic, um, just helping kids get vaccines, just normal shots and sick sick kids, well visits, all that stuff. So um, check up. So she's looking forward to that. But, yeah, we just take her income, and we actually save. So personally, we live off my income, save her income. Um, her income never touches any any use. We whatever What I set to pay myself is what we live off of for the month. And everything else she that she has uh, goes into a savings account for future future things to come, kids or whatever it may be, house, car, whatever. Cool. So that that's how we do ours. It's not that is not the way that everybody has to do it. Uh, everyone is different. And the first year in business, you you're probably not going to be able to pay yourself a salary for all year long, and still have money left over at the end of the year. You're going to have to take some from. from your wife's job or from your other side hustle or something like it's there's different things there's different ways to go about it but that that's how we do it in our business year four now cool well i really appreciate you kind of giving us a little bit of uh, your life and business and the good news is guys if you want more of um jeremiah's world 
that you have your own podcast. Yeah. So let people know how they can connect with your podcast. Yeah, so we we are the Growing Green Landscapes podcast. That name is probably going to be changing here in the spring. We're probably going to go to just the Growing Green podcast. Um, but same same two things there, so you'll be able to find it you, no matter what. If you what. need a fresh new thumbnail, I, I can get you hooked up. Well, we need to get on that because I actually do need one. So okay. glad you brought one up because yeah. I'm going to have to have that. So um, that's where we're going to be heading, Growing Green uh, podcast. But for now, Growing Green Landscapes podcast, you go check it out on all major co- podcast platforms. Like we discussed in the beginning of the show, we gave you a full rundown of what the podcast is about. We talk solo interviews, I mean solo episodes sometimes. Other episodes, we have great guest interviews. Like today, we just had on uh, Caleb Allman and John Pajak. That was that episode's already out by now, probably. But really? this one's out, so um, that's that's a really good episode. Go listen to it. We talked a lot of good stuff in that one, um, so go check it out. But you can listen there at any time you want. You can follow us on Instagram at Growing Green Landscapes, and uh, come tune on in because the one that we're about to do with Paul is going to be a really good one. We're going to be talking about entrepreneurship and the social media and the podcast world, and it's a uh, it's a different animal. It's a different animal than the landscaping business, but there's some really good principles to be learned there. Yeah, and with the land, lawn care landscaping business, this is why I, I love when a teenager has a lawn care landscaping business because even if they go into another career or even if they're an employee one day for a business, you learn so much foundational business. Yes. I mean, the basic thing of, of understanding your profit and loss statement and, and just there's so much that carries yeah. over. And so... We'll talk about uh, – we'll tease your podcast so yeah. folks will listen to that episode when, when it comes out. But I look forward to sharing uh, with you that information, and I think it will help some other folks too because I get a lot of DMs of people it's asking gonna be a top ten. That. It's going to be a top ten episode on mine for sure. I, I believe it's going to be really good. No no pressure, man. No pressure. <laughs> you better bring Under it. Under promise and over deliver is my philosophy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jeremiah's over here. That was going to be a top ten podcast. Here, well, so. I mean, you've got over a million downloads. You're supposed to be bringing the heat now. Uh, like. I, I will. I'll, I'll try my best, brother. I, w- I will try my best. I, hear I remember uh, Rasheed Wallace or one of those guys with Detroit Pistons. It was guaranteed. They're going to beat the Cavs in the, the Eastern Conference Finals. He guaranteed it. Guaranteed. Because his name was Rasheed yeah. Wallace. I think that was his yeah. name. There's Ben Wallace, Rasheed Wallace. The Detroit Pistons used to have these big, burly, you know, power forward guys. And and uh, they anyway, guaranteed it. Came on down. And LeBron yeah. and the boys took care of them. And I and, uh, think they ended up Go going Cleveland, to the baby. NBA Finals. That's 2007, if I have my math right, history right. And uh, So yeah. anyway, you got you got to under-promise, over-deliver. The go took care of business. And um, last but not least, guys, as we mentioned at the top of the broadcast, if you are looking to get your administration part of your business in order, get Jobber and uh, try it out for 14 days. See if it's going to be a more efficient workflow for doing your scheduling, your invoicing, and things of that nature. And then if you're comfortable and you're like, oh, yep, this this will do it, <laughs> then um, I, I turned to Jobber in summer 2019, never looked back. So that's uh, how I've run my business just get a crm man get it yeah get it it's it's an expense but get it's an investment it's an investment is what it is well it should once you onboard and get ready get everything you know in place it's going to save you time and and, which is ultimately going to give you that time as brian did a great podcast on this then you parlay that into making more money so all right well that'll that'll do it and that's getjobber.com forward slash paul uh for those of you who want to get on with team jobber all right jeremiah hot tub time the music is cued. This episode's about to be over. I know Mr. Producer's already got the music rolling. Yeah, there he you go. Started. 